And in the next few minutes, I will go into some scriptures and prove it to you that you don't need any man. Anybody who is complaining and saying, I have no man to help me, that person is really not ready to be helped. The Bible says in the book of John, the chapter number 5, the Bible says there was a, a man who sat at the pool of Bethesda, and the man had sat there for 38 years. And we were able to have a sneak peek in his mouth. Because the Bible says when Jesus Christ appeared to him or showed up at the, the pool of Bethesda, he went straight to this particular man, although there were a lot of people who were lame and feeble at the place. When he went to this man and said, what can I do for you? The man said that, Oh, I have no man to help me. And when the angel of God comes to stir up the waters, I have nobody to help me to put me in there. The challenge I want to put to you tonight is that if indeed the man needed a man to help him, there's to Jesus Christ, who was a man. And the man Jesus had offered him to help or have had offered him help I am here to help you and yet you are complaining that I have no man to help me <laughs> tonight I want to lift up your spirit but before I can do that I need to bring you down I need to point pinpoint some things that is causing us not to flourish in whatever God has deposited in us this is the man who has sat there I believe you have heard this story many times and I've heard people say that oh um, if he, he could have even crawled on the floor and for 38 years he would have made it to the pool but there he sat complaining and saying that I have no man to help me and there is a man standing there extending a helping hand to you can I help you and all you can say to this man is that I have no man to help me. What are you talking about? That means that you really don't need help. You are comfortable in the state in which you are. That is why you said, you are saying that you don't, you, you, you have no man. Hallelujah. And so tonight I want to lift up your spirit. You don't need any man. In fact, whatever you need to succeed in life is right there inside of you. To prove my point and to make my point very clear, if we go to the book of Acts, the chapter number 3, the Bible says that there was another man who was also lame and crippled, who sat at the gate of beautiful. And there comes Peter and John, ready to go into the temple to pray. And there sat this man begging for arms. The Bible says he asked Peter and James, and they said to him, silver and gold we have not, but such as we have we give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this is where I want you to pay attention and compare it with the man who sat at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says that Peter lifted up his hand, stretched forth his hand and lifted him up. And the man received strength and he began to walk. Beloved, all you need to succeed in life is just somebody to lift you up. You don't need the person to show you how to walk. Many of us are waiting for somebody to show us how to walk. We complain that we need a man to help us. And when a man comes, lift us up and put us on our feet. We want that man to also show us how to walk, how to run, how to skip, how to do everything. No, that means that you are really not ready to be helped. This is another man crippled. And all he needed was somebody to lift him up. And the Bible says that when Peter extended his hand, lifted him up on his feet, the man rose up, ran, jumped, clapping his hands and praising the name of the Lord. Tonight I came to lift up your spirit that all you need is yourself. Every seed that produces a tree or a, a, a fruit has itself in it. 
Hallelujah. The tree does not go out there, go borrow somebody's seed, come and plant it, and let the tree grow and call it mango. The mango tree does not go and borrow the banana um, tree or the um, orange tree, plant it when it grows, and then it calls it mango. No, it is a seed which is embedded right inside of it that causes it to grow. Beloved, tonight, I want somebody to be equipped, somebody to be empowered and energized and know that all you need to succeed in life is embedded right inside of you. You need no man, you need yourself. Because whatever God made you to be, he deposited the seed in you. He deposited the seed in you. You can do it, you can succeed. Don't look up to man anymore. See, I, I caught something last night. I was thinking about some of these things and that there are some people out there um, who are, we, we, we look up to, maybe they are in ministry, they are doing something. Probably we don't even know um, their congregation, we don't know much about them, but we have seen them on Facebook like you are seeing me now. And we look at them and sometimes we think they are so successful and they, we, we, you know, sometimes you are coming from the same place with them and you, you look at them and it looks like you are not doing anything. Everything is uh, coming down at you. You are comparing yourself so much with other people and it's turning your spirit down. It's making you feel like you are not successful or you are not doing anything to impact this world or your, your seed that is in you is dead. But I came to tell somebody tonight that your seed is not dead. It is right there. It is alive. You just need to cultivate it planted these people you are looking up to and and you are making them turn you down and and dumping your spirit they have planted their seed they have dug the, the, the dirty places and they have planted their seed there and that is why it is growing and you are looking at them and you are looking down on your own self but I came to lift somebody's spirit that they the seed that will cause you to succeed and prosper it is there in you finally let me end it this way with this seed thing I am talking about. I caught this revelation. Um, that for a tree to, to, to grow. Or when a seed is planted. You know the seed may be very beautiful. And you may appreciate it. There are some seeds that are so nice. And sometimes you want to just put it on top of your table. You want to have a nice carpet or a tiled place. And put the seed there. But beloved, if you do that, you are denying the seed of its capability. It is not going to bear anything. It is not going to grow. It is not going to do anything. The reason why probably you are not succeeding or nothing is going on for you is because you are so afraid, you are so scared to, to, to get into the dirty waters. But for a seed to grow, you need to dig the earth. Put it there. Put some more dirt on it. I remember back in Ghana, um, when, when you plant, you go to the cow where they keep the cow and you gather the cow dunk and we gather all those stuff the, the, the dirty stuff and we put them on top of the soil as a form of manure or fertilizer hallelujah and so that these things will be able to help the seed grow beloved as i conclude this video i want you to know that you need the debt in order to grow don't worry about what people will say. Get yourself dirty. Because at the end of the day, you will grow. You will bear fruit. And all the glory will not go to any man. Not to them that are talking. But to the God who made you. And deposited the seed in you. You are blessed. You are highly favored. God is watching you. He is expecting so much from you. He knows that you can succeed. That is why he gave you the gift that is in you. Don't be like that one servant who had a gift and he, 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 he dug the earth. He hid it somewhere because he was afraid of the boss. The boss is not a monster. He is a loving father. He believes in you. That is why he gave you that gift. It may be as little as cooking and you can cook and make a million out of it. It may be as simple as making hair and you can do it and succeed in life. Yours may be just singing. Just go ahead and do it. Don't worry about what people are saying. You will succeed because God who made you gave you that seed for your prosperity and for your success. God richly bless you. In Jesus mighty name. Amen.